Hello online viewers, welcome to our lecture video. In this lecture video, we'll be solving our problem 2 of chapter stresses and strain. And here our problem reads as Find the reaction forces at A and D of following steel bar and take Young's modulus velocity E equals to 2 into the power 5 newton per mm square. So as you can clearly see over here, we have a, we have a steel bar which, uh, which has got two rigid supports at end A and D. And we need to find the reaction forces at the ends A and D. And as you can see here, uh, and as you can see here our steel bar cons consists of three, consists of uh, three, uh, three portions of uh, portion 1 portion 2 and portion 3 and each sections have their uh, and each sections have their area as 200 mm square 300 mm square and 400 mm square and they and they have their and they have their respective length as well and we have a force of 100 kN acting acting at uh, acting at the portion b and 200 kN at acting at the portion c and here we need to find the reaction forces at a and d and we have assumed r1 and r2 be the reaction for reaction r1 and r2 be the reaction developed at a and d and regarding the direction of the forces R1 and R2. I have assumed both of them, uh, both of them to both of them acting at the left. But we can assume them, uh, assume them acting at uh, right, or uh, right, uh, right or left, uh, according to the choice. The, there won't be any, uh, there won't be any mistake while finding the answer. But uh, as you can see here, both these forces, 100 kN and 200 kN, are acting to the right. So in order, in order to maintain equilibrium both the reaction forces r1 and r2 must act to the must act to the right so uh, so therefore i am assuming assuming both these reaction forces r1 and r2 acting at left you can uh, you can assume uh, them acting uh, you can assume them to act at any, any direction there won't be any mistakes next uh, our next step while, so, while solving such, uh, such uh, problems as i have already talked in my previous video is we need to equate original forces as zero in order to check equilibrium in order to check equilibrium what we simply uh, what we uh, simply do is we uh, we equate original forces to we equate we equate original forces to zero so we have uh, we have 100 kN and 200 kN acting at right and r1 and r2 acting at left so uh, let me assume uh, forces acting at left to be positive and forces acting at uh, uh, forces acting at right to be negative so minus 100 minus 200 equals to zero so this will be, this will be equal to r1 plus r2 equals to 300 kN so this is my first and foremost. Uh, so this is my uh, so this is uh, so this is my first and foremost equation. So uh, so question the steel bar is in a, the steel bar is in a equilibrium. The steel bar uh, the steel bar is in a equilibrium. The overall steel bar is in equilibrium. So uh, so the portion one, two, and three also must be in also must be in equilibrium. Uh, also, uh, also also must be in equilibrium. Now we'll consider now we'll now we'll consider equilibrium of each and every part. Consider equilibrium of every part so for our first portion we have a and b and and, and as you can see uh, for our first portion a force of r1 is acting at left is acting at left so in order to maintain uh, so in order to maintain equilibrium for our part one a force of r1 must act to the right a force of tensile nature of tensile nature must act at the right but as you can clearly see in the figure no such or no or no such or no such forces act on the steel bar so as you can clearly see from the figure, uh, no such forces of uh, no no such uh, forces of R1 of tensile nature act in the steel bar. So we assume a force of R1, R1 of tensile nature acting acting at outward at B. But we cannot assume such forces uh, uh, such forces. But we cannot assume forces in in such a manner. So we assume uh, an equal and opposite force of R1 acting in opposite direction, such that they cancel out each other. So we have a force of R1 acting in uh, acting at left and acting at right at portion B, and the force uh, and the force acting at right we have copied it over here. We have copied this force acting at right over here. Now we move on to our portion three. Now on to our portion three. This is our portion three. What do we have in uh, portion three? Is a force of R2 is acting inward. Is a, a force of a force of R2 a force of R2 is acting uh, uh, is acting inward. So in order to uh, so in order to maintain equi in order to maintain equilibrium, a force a, a force of same magnitude but acting in opposite direction must uh, uh, acting at opposite direction must uh, acting at opposite direction must act at uh, must act at portion Z. So in order to maintain equilibrium, a same a same force of equal magnitude but in opposite direction must act at Z. But as you can clearly see from the figure, no such forces act. Uh, no such forces act. Uh, no such forces of R2 of compressive nature act in C. So what we assume is a force of R2 acting in acting in other direction. So 
so in such a way we can uh, so uh, suppose so two equal and opposite force acting at the sea then only we can uh, then only we can suppose uh, suppose sorts of forces so we have done the same we have suppose a force acting at uh, acting at right of r2 and acting at left of r2 and the force acting at the right of r2 which is of compressive nature has been used over here you know has been used over here so 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 for our portion 3 of force of r2 x x at left and uh, and the same force act at uh, x at right so so now our portion 1 and 3 are in equilibrium now for now for our portion 2 what we simply do is all the forces which are uh, all the forces all the forces which are uh, remaining which are uh, re which are uh, which are remaining we simply uh, we simply uh, we simply put them here in the portion b and c so so as you can see the forces remaining uh, remaining over here are 200 kN 200 kN in this side and 100 kN in this side we also have uh, we also have r1 and r2 but as you can see the r1 which is acting at left which, which is acting at right sorry as you can see here the r1 which is acting at right has already been used in this portion b so now the r1 which is acting at left will be used over here and as you can see for this uh, as you can as you can see for this portion c the uh, the r2 which is acting at right has already been used over here so the r2 which acts at left this will be used over here so as you can see over here our uh, for our portion AB, this is uh, this is of uh, uh, this is of tensile nature. This of tensile nature as both the forces R1 are moving outward, and for our and for our portion three, this is of compressive nature. Compression or compression is a uh, compression or compression is acting over, here, or you can simply say not tensile but tension uh, tensile or you can say tension. You can say tensile or tension is a uh, tensile or expansion is expansion is happening over happening in portion a uh, now for our portion uh, now for our portion 2 uh, we don't know uh, we uh, don't know whether the forces uh, uh, we don't know whether the force r1 and r2 are greater than 100 and 200 kilo uh, are greater than 100 and uh, hundred in, uh, or are greater than 100 or 200 kilo newton but we are going to uh, but we are going to uh, assume uh, such that the forces r1 and r2 are greater than 100 and 200 kilo newton so this uh, becomes as So, uh, so we are going to assume this is as 100 minus R1 and this as 200 minus R2. So we are going to assume R1 and R2 in uh, R1 and uh, so we are going to assume R1 and R2 in such a way that uh, in such a way that R1 is less than 100 kN and R2 is greater and, and uh, R2 is uh, greater than is greater than 100 kN uh, such that there is compression acting in po acting in portion two compression. We are going to assume such that uh, there is. Uh, we are going to assume that uh, there is compression acting in this uh, compression uh, acting in portion two as well. So now for our condition of equilibrium, condition for equilibrium, expansion or tension, expansion or tension must be equal to compression. Expansion or tension must be expansion or tension must be equal to compression. So, uh, so what uh, so what happens over uh, so uh, so simply what open what happens over here is uh, del one del one t equals to del two c plus del del three c, which means expansion or tension in a portion one is equal to compression in portion two and and compression in portion uh, uh, compression in portion three compression in portion three. So this is uh, so we can simply write this del one plus del two plus del three. So the logic behind the so so the logic behind this is uh, behind this is in o in order to maintain uh, in order to maintain equilibrium. However, uh, how much this block expands? How much this uh, bl uh, block expands? Both this block two and three must compress. Must compress. Then only equilibrium will uh, then only overall equilibrium of the steel bar will uh, uh, exist. Hence. Uh, hence the uh, tension uh, tension or expansion in steel in, in steel bar one must be equal to compression uh, compression in both the steel bar two and three next we have the formula for uh, formula for uh, del one equals to p1 l1 uh, p1 l1 divided by a1 e equals to this is equal to p2 l2 divided by a2 e plus p3 l3 divided by a3 e so as you can see here p1 equals to r1 into l1 is 1 meter uh, 1 meter or you can convert it into 10 to the power 3 into millimeter a1 is 200 mm square the e is same so you can simply cancel out all the e then we have uh, p2 
P2 is uh, P2 is equal to 100 minus R1. 100 minus R1. I am taking this 100 minus R1. Or we can take uh, 200 minus R2. Whatever is your choice, we can either take 100 minus R1 or 200 minus R2. So both these are same forces into uh, 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 divided by A2 is 300 mm square, 3000 mm square uh, plus P3 is equal to uh, P3 is equal to R2 into uh, L3 is equal to 2 meter 2 into 10 to the power 3 co converting it into millimeter we have A3 as 400 for, uh, sorry 4000 now now when you solve this equation what we get is R1 minus 0.5 R2 equals to 50 so what we can see this cancel out all the 10 to the power 3 cancel out all this 0 so 1 divided by 2 is 1 divided by 2 we get 0 0.5 and simply solve and simply solve and simply solve this now what you can do uh, now what you can do at last is so i'm going to write over here solve equation 1 and equation 2 so when you solve both these equations solve equation uh, solve equation 1 and solve equation 2 then what you get is r1 equals to 133.33 kN and R2 equals to 166.66 uh, .66 So here is our reaction forces of R1 and R2. And in this way, uh, and in this way, we can solve uh, such questions. Uh, such, such questions will be will be solving more similar pro problems in the future. So if you like the video, do subscribe to the channel. And if you have any queries, uh, comment down below. Thank you.